Hello guys. So today you will see what are loops and how different types of loops can be written and executed. We will be taking C++ as our programming language to understand these basic loop concepts. Obviously you can apply the same concept in other languages especially in Python, Java and others as well. Mostly the loop execution techniques and the syntax remains the same throughout different languages. So without wasting time on the languages, let's focus on understanding what are different types of loops and what are their syntaxes. So what is a loop? A loop is a particular way of bringing iteration into your code. Now what do I mean by iteration? Suppose you have a particular code of say 10,000 lines. Now you want to execute this particular 10,000 lines, this particular code, this piece of 10,000 lines, say 1500 times. Fine. When you do the math, it tells us that it is equivalent to writing 1.5 million lines. Well, that becomes really hell when you think of writing 1.5 million lines. Being as a programmer, can we optimize it in a better way? Obviously. Let us see how. The catch here is that the 10,000 lines that we initially talked about, about, right? This is a repetitive part. How? So let's assume it in a very simple way that let's reduce this for the understanding purpose. Let's reduce this particular code of 10,000 lines to a single line. Now, if you see on the screen, suppose if I want to print my name, right? Suppose the function is printing my name. So now if I say cout, cout is a way of printing names in C++ obviously. And suppose I print my I print Atenium, right? Obviously with a new line. Now if I execute this, I see that Atenium is printed once, right? So this is a function executed once. So let's say now we want to print this particular line that is Atenium, say five times. Okay, let's skip it. Let's build up step by step. So obviously uh, what a new programmer will do, a beginner, that he'll copy and paste this lines for five times. Now if I run this, let's see how the output looks like. Obviously we have at a new printed five times. Obviously we can extend it to n times and let's come to our original logic. That this is the function and we want to print it say 1500 times the original understanding that we had of 1500 lines. So obviously you'll copy paste in 1500 times and that becomes really difficult for you. What if I have to write it say 1 million times because 1 million times I can print a number. I can print a particular line. This particular line 1 million times it can be printed obviously. So can we do it in a better way? Yes, obviously here where uh, loops come in handy, right? So let's first try to implement, just understand the concept of loop and then we'll come to various types of loops, right? So let's say I want to print it, right? So what I'll do, I'll ask my C++ to run a particular code for n times. How can I do it? So I'll use a loop. This is the syntax or a loop. Don't get into intricacies into it. For int i equals to zero, say i less than 10. Now this is important, right? Just keep on watching how it's happening. And then we simply write C out attaining with a new line. Now, what is the similarity between the previous code and this code? The only thing is that this is my particular code, which remains the same, right? Only thing is I have included some for, some kind of programming struct around it, right? A kind of programming, I would say definition around it. Now what it does, just see how it's, how what output it lets look like. If you count it, this total attainee is printed 10 times. Basically what I'm telling my loop to do, that you start from zero, you go on increasing i by one at each time and then up till when up till the value of i becomes 10 right 
right so obviously using this kind of techniques will help you to reduce the number of lines of code that you need to write especially when there is a repetition in the code that you want to write fine now before we proceed further it is important to understand that what are the loop variables so obviously this is a part loop is a part of a program that is helping you to execute your code in number of times right so here is a concept of loop variable that is the single only thing that you need to understand the loop variable is a variable that keeps track of how many iteration of a particular code has been done if you see over here in the screen this i is the variable that i am defining it is keeping a track of the number of iterations done in the code so this part of the code that is highlighted in blue over here right this is known as initialization loop initialization loop variable initialization right i is the loop variable obviously why because it is helping me to keep track of my iterations first thing is clear so there are three things to it loop variable initialization loop variable updation and the check condition what are these so in this is the for example of a very standard and mostly used loop that is a for loop so for it is what it, it's saying that i will be initialized with the value 0 at each iteration before you start the iteration then it goes to this part of the code the second part this is known as the check condition it is checking the value whether i is less than 10 or not so where the i is 0 it is less than 10 now so it will enter into the loop now this has entered to execute this part inside the loop means inside the curly braces of the loop so whatever is written over there it will keep on executing it there and there as it is required and then after this execution is done the loop are designed in such a way that it again goes to this part of the code that is i plus plus means value of i is increased by one this is an increment operator you can look online resources and what does it mean it simply means i equals to i plus one that is value of i is increased by one so initially what was the value zero now the value has become one so now it will check one is less than 10 again condition yes again it will come over here inside the loop it will execute the entire body of the loop this is the body of the loop that i have added in blue on the screen if you see right now basically the code that you want the loop to execute in every iteration and then again it will go to i increase the value then again it will check the condition so after all this drama is done right like every time it's coming executing going incrementing checking condition some way or the other you, you see like you know i is increasing by one at each iteration so some point of time this i will assume the value of 10 right and when this value will i will assume the value of 10 let's think of a step before 10 when i is equal to 9 9 will be less than 10 again the loop will be executed again i will be increased now the value of i will be 10 this time 10 less than 10 condition will be checked which will become false and my entire loop condition will become false the check condition will become false and as soon as the check condition becomes false it comes out of the loop and then it's continued to execute the entire remaining program as it is written so the only basic thing to here understand was that a loop is controlled by a loop variable it has an initialized value initialization place where the value variable is initialized this is a one-time activity then it checks the condition depending on whether it is true or false if it is true it will execute the loop body if not it will come out of the loop body loop will be exited and if it is true then it will go into the body execute the loop content the loop body and then again it will go to the updation variable then again check condition will be made and this this is how the cycle repeats so out of the three things if you could remember quickly that is a loop initialization condition checking and loop updation initialization is the thing that is executed only once loop variable updation and loop variable condition check these are the two things that are done n number of times for n number of iterations so this is at a very basic level where you can understand how a loop works so this was all about loops in programming now the question comes what are different types of loops so basically there are three types of loop for loop while loop and do while loop while and do while are somewhat kind of complementary or supplementary you can say to each other they share many common syntaxes so without wasting further time 
since we have understood for loop in very detail with respect to loop variable let's see how we can execute the same thing using while loop the same part right so let's quickly comment this out fine now as i told every loop irrespective of whatever it type it it must have ideally a initialization condition a check condition and an updation place right now you would say why i told ideally so that will come to at a later point part of the this video first let's quickly see how we can execute the same thing of printing a tail you 10 times using while loop so what i do i'll create a variable of int i equals to zero same thing while i is less than 10 and here we'll write c out attenue same like the code remains the same i need just the iteration part for iteration part i replace for loop with while loop that is the only change i'm doing with respect to the for loop prior used earlier and here if you see i'll write i plus plus now if i run this particular code Wow! So again, a tail is printed n times, and now if you see over here for this while loop, this condition checking is done with this particular keyword while only. Here also for within this for keyword, the cons this particular part of the code there was the updation thing that is i equal i is less than ten. This thing is still there while i less than ten. Only thing is that the initialization, which was a one-time activity, remember I mentioned earlier, that has been put out of the loop, and obviously it is a one-time activity because variable we initialize only once, right? And then there is the updation part that you have to do after each loop iteration. In the for loop also it was being done. And if you see over here, after writing the entire part of code in this looping construct, loop, loop body, right? In this loop body, the last line of the body of the loop is the updation of the loop value. So this is just a basic difference between a while and a for loop. That is the loop variant, the three conditions for the three places. The three important thing for the loop. What were they? First, the initialization of the looping variable, updation of the looping variable, and the check condition. So these three are the things that remain intact in any type of loop. Only their places change. For example, in for loop, these three things were all together at one place. In while loop, they are scattered at different places. Now, since we have understood the while loop, so let's quickly see how do while works, right? So, for your better understanding, I'm just copy pasting the same loop, and you will see that very minor differences are there. Obviously, there is an initialization int i equals to zero. Syntax changes do that is do it, and after everything is done, you make the condition check i less than ten. And you must notice over here that in do while loop after the while there will be a terminator over here. So this is how the syntax has been designed in C plus plus. Obviously, it can vary. This termination and the terminator and all these minute things may vary from language to language. But by and large, the logic remains the same in Java also, in Python also, in most of the popular languages. Loop is something that remains unchanged in almost all languages. Now let's quickly run this and comment this particular stuff. So if you see over here again, this particular thing that is attaining has been printed ten times. And why I'm telling you to count this time? You will just quickly come to one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Now you might be wondering why I'm counting attaining. I was not counting it before, right? Because before I was very confident. No, look, I'm confident right now as well. You remember I told you that uh, ideally all the conditions must be there and be intact, right? So let me quickly tell you that you can have a for loop without any of the three things defined. You must be thinking that I'm joking, right? So let's quickly see how is that possible. 
Now these were the basic stuff that I have explained you, right? Now these are something which are trickier part and you can say like kind of bit advanced things that you get to learn for the loops. For, for the loops when I say me, for this concept loops. Suppose I write a loop something like four and I give just two terminator, nothing else, right? Should it work? Let's see how it goes. And we again write C out attaining. And now let's see, see all, uh, all these particular code have been okay. Let's remove it only for so if you see there are there is no any loop except this particular loop. Now see what happens now if I run this. Now let's quickly see what happens if I run this. So if you see over here, this attainu has been printed sometimes, and then you see a blank line. Obviously, I'm running it in a particular ID, but if you run it in proper in a proper computer, in a proper compiler, right? Actually, there will be a stack overflow. What is the meaning of stack overflow? This is an example of infinite loop. It will keep on executing infinitely. There is no exit from this loop. This is the meaning of this uh, this particular condition. Even if I write something like for int i equals to zero, you may say that I have not initialized it. That's why the condition is this. No, 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 man. No, 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 sir. So let's see, like i is less than 10. I've given the two conditions that is loop variable initialization and the loop condition check. But that updation I'm not doing. This i is not getting updated. i remains zero only. And every time the condition will be looked at zero less than 10, zero less than 10, zero less than 10. So every time it should be true. And this is also an example of an infinite loop. I can leave, I see, out of the three places of for loop, I can leave blank any particular place. That is not a syntax error. So you see, right? The same thing is being printed again and again and again. You might wonder that why this attainu has been printed to side by side, right? So don't worry about it. It was from the last output only. Now if I run it, fine. Again, it is an infinite loop. Now, can I write an infinite loop in while also? Yes, obviously we can. Let's see how. Same thing, while, but here you can't leave it blank. You need to just give one. One is a condition two in C++ and zero is a condition four. So while two, every time this particular part was something that was returning, that was a condition check. For example, the for the middle part, right? And condition check, if I give it to be true, right? Then it is forever true. And again, the same thing, see out a day. Let's see what the output looks like. Again, it's an infinite loop, right? See, here you define whether int i and you update it also, that is not, uh, see, now what I'll do, I'll give the condition, int i equals to zero, and I'll also update i as plus plus. But since that i, is not being used in the condition check that's why this loop is always true and it will again lead to infinite loop right so these are some of the magic uh, of language syntax i would say the capabilities of a language again it's an infinite loop so this was regarding the finite and infinite loop one last thing which i would like to tell you that since while and do while are exactly the same right if you see from the example, then why they were designed in the first place? So the very basic thing is that while and do while, out of these two, that while and do while, out of these two, do while is a type of loop that will execute exactly once, even if the condition is false. Now, what do I mean by that? Let's see. So suppose I take a condition where I define the variable int i equals to 10. Fine. Now I write two conditions. Why? I is less than 10. 10 is less than 10. This is a false condition, right? So ideally, this particular struct should not be executed. And to distinguish between while and do while loop body, let's give different messages in there. For example, like here we can give C out inside while loop fine and second is the do condition 
I'm writing the same code. I variable remains the loop variable remains the same for both of these. And here I'll write the same thing, but a different message so that we can differentiate these two different loop bodies inside say do one. Right? And here we will give the condition while i is less than 10. So if you see over here, I have given the same looping condition in both of these two loops, right? Now let's see first the input and then I'll explain you why, what I was trying to see. So if you see over here, the while loop has not been executed. The body of that loop has not been executed. While the body of the do while loop has been executed. Why is it so? Because see, if I have been given the value as 10. In line number seven, what's happening is, in line number seven over here, the while loop, what's happening is that first the condition is being checked and then it is going inside. So 10 is less than 10, 10 is less than 10 is a false condition. So this loop will execute, it will be executed then and there in line number seven. So not even a single time this while loop has been, while loop body has been executed or entered. However, if you see from line number 11 onwards, that is the do while loop, when it gets entry in line number 11 inside the loop body, it just say enter it, right? Do enter the loop. So at least once the execution will happen. Now after that, when since the condition is being checked for the loop condition that is i while while i less than ten, so there it becomes a false condition. But before reaching at line number thirteen, it has already come to line number twelve. Why? Because there is there was a clear entry at line number eleven. No check. Enter it. So this is a very basic difference between while and do while and this is a very important concept in fact. So in programming there will be many instances where you will be actually required to execute a loop exactly once, at least once in fact, even when your execution doesn't get executed like happens for another iterations. So that is the reason why do while has been added and along with the while. So these were the three different types of loops that we discussed today and we have covered almost the very basic syntax of all the three types of loops and just remember loop is something that becomes really an important tool for you if you are actually coding or developing a software. So understanding the loops, its syntaxes and when to use, which type of loops to use becomes all together very important for you. So these were just the basics so you can just uh, look for online resources even at Atelu. We have data structures and algorithm course where we explain various programming concepts over there. You can try that. Until then, keep coding. Thank you.